Greetings folks and welcome to the Electromaker Show. This is your midweek roundup of all things Maker and Embedded and, well, lovely. This week we have a quickfire plethora of Raspberry Pi Pico projects and we will be announcing the winners of the great PSOC6 challenge, that is a contest that Electromaker and Cypress were putting on together. We'll also have a mystery box competition and lots more. But for now, let's get running with the show. So we're beginning this week's show with the Raspberry Pi Pico once again. Um, these are some projects and tutorials that I thought were cool, but rather than just focus on one or two, I thought let's get through five or six of them, but very, very quickly. So this is your plethora of Pi Pico projects for the week. And we're beginning on the Electromaker website with a getting started guide to the Raspberry Pi Pico. However, this isn't just blinking an LED, although it does do that. This is using an I2C screen, a little 128 by 68 pixel OLED display. So yes, this is a getting started guide, but perhaps a little bit more in depth than the average getting started guide. Um, as you can see in the code down here, this is the hex values of an image that you can get by using an online converter. There's various ways of doing that. Um, and there are a few lines of code for how to put this onto an OLED display. Point of interest here, and um, the LED blinking is a little bit different to your average LED blink sketch. Um, most of those use blocking timing routines. So whether you're using the Python time sleep or whether you're using Arduino uh, delay, both of those stop and then start, and you can't do anything while they're delaying. This uses one of the onboard timers of the Pi Pico and the callback system, which is a far better and non-blocking way of doing things. Cool little project. Up next, VGA video output using the Raspberry Pi Pico. This is a video from Robin Grosset, and uh, this shows how you can use a resistor ladder to uh, send out R, G, and B signals through a VGA connector and, well, make images on a screen. Um, Watch the video, it's fascinating. He's done various videos that cover things like this. There's another one on sound output. Um, I will, of course, be linking this in the description, but let's just get to the good bit. So yes, later on in the video, this is an example. Um, by the way, just to note, there's another video that follows this that corrects a little bit of the color problems. It turns out he had his resistors flipped on the red channel, which is why things looked a little bit odd. Um, but yes, as you can see, this gives full VGA output from a Raspberry Pi Pico. And just to remind you, apart from the VGA uh, connector that he has, the only things in between the Pi Pico and the VGA cable are a set of resistors. It's kind of amazing. Next up, machine learning on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Yes, it is possible. Uh, this video from hardware.ai takes you through everything you need to know about uh, yeah, how you can get inference up and running on a Pi Pico. It still blows my mind that you can do things like this on such small hardware. Um, but yeah, in short, this is a tutorial video that will take you through every step of getting that up and running. So the video uses models trained using Edge Impulse, which is a service I'm not that familiar with, um, but the actual Edge Impulse model that uh, was used in the video is available here. It's linked in the description of the video. Uh, there is also uh, GitHubs for this, um, all, again, in the uh, AI hardware.ai video description, and I will be putting a link to this video in our description. The Learn Embedded Systems YouTube channel is a fantastic channel for learning about the STM32 uh, chip and how to program those, but they've turned their gaze to the Raspberry Pi Pico recently with a bunch of tutorials in the C and C++ domain. Um, this is an introduction to multi-core programming, something I find very interesting because the RP2040 is a multi-core chip, it's dual core. I've never really messed around with it before, but this is an incredibly simple example that you can get up and running in minutes. Uh, essentially, one core will read the onboard temperature sensor while the other core will print it out. A great simple example, a fantastic entry point in the multi-core programming and one I suggest you check out along with all the other videos on this channel. And finally, on the plethora of Pi Pico projects, Whistle Stop Tour is Nova Spirit Tech. Now, unsurprisingly, Don has put out a few videos about the Pi Pico. He's always completely on it, and in fact, ahead of the curve on most things. Um, one of his recent videos was making an auto clicker using the Pi Pico. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, these clicking games, which basically you just tap the screen over and over again on a mobile phone or on a computer. Not really something I'm into. I'm not interested in it. At least I wasn't until he showed me how I could not play an auto clicker by getting a Pi Pico to do it for me. But that's not what this video is about. This is about making a macro keyboard, um, which is a project that has been done in various iterations with lots of different kinds of boards. As some of you well know, I'm working on one myself as an editing controller, and I will get around to showing you that again one day, I promise. Um, but yes, uh, this is using uh, the uh, Pi Pico as a USB HID device and setting custom macro keys up using whatever buttons and switches you have lying around. Um, as always, it's very well explained, and as you can see from the video, he goes through the code piece by piece. Um, and yeah, Don always makes fantastic videos. I'm a big fan of Nova Spirit Tech. Um, and I suggest you check this and all of the other Pi Pico projects out, all of which will be linked in the description of the video. So, uh, slowing down slightly, I may have drank an entire cup of coffee during that little Pi Pico roundup. Um, it's time to return to Mitchell Davis. 
Every time Mitch Davis uploads a video, it almost always ends up on the show. Um, it's simply because he's just one of the best explainers of uh, how microcontrollers work at a beginner basic level. His videos are easy to digest, and whether you don't know what PWM is and you want to learn about that, or whether you already know how PWM works, but you just want to know how to do it on the STM32, this video covers you in both bases. He goes through every single step of using the STM Cube IDE for setting up all the registers and setting up everything using the tools. Um, and yeah, this particular video concentrates on the uh, little blue pill boards, but the STM Nuclear will be in the next one. Um, I don't want to spend any more time on it. I just want to remind you once again that Mitch's channel exists and he's putting out some of the best tutorials that I've seen in a long time. And our final project this week, we've gone full circle and we're back on the Electromega website. This is a project called Browse N by Nick Build. So, as you can see from this image, uh, this is a webcam which is watching your face and working out uh, whether you're smiling, whether you're frowning, whether you have a neutral face. The idea being that you have this running in the background and it will give you an idea about what your face is doing when you're browsing the web. Now, this project uses the Jetson Xavier NX, which is a very powerful single board computer for exactly tasks like this, uh, connected to a webcam. And as you can see here, the images from the webcam are passed into the NX for classification, and then uh, that uh, classification, uh, whatever emotion you were feeling at the time, or it thinks you were feeling, is uh, sent up to the web dashboard. Um, yeah, just a lovely project. All of the code is here. Um, there is a video on here as well, which takes you through it all, um, and of course, a a uh, nice picture of the Xavier Nano. I think these things look fantastic, the Xavier NX boards. I know that sounds stupid to think that a single board computer looks nice. It's what it does that's important, but these things look cool. Um, and of course, there is a, a, everything you need to do this and the GitHub with all of the code as well. Um, this is a, yeah, a, a pretty in-depth project. Um, I really would like to look into it, and I wonder if it would actually run on my Jetson Nano. I'm going to have to have a little look at that. Anyway, um, yes, fantastic project from Nick Build. Um, are you happy when you're browsing the web? Well, this can tell you, sort of. Now we are going to move on to the great PSOC6 challenge, which was a contest held on Electromaker.io with Cypress and Mauser. Now, as you can see, this competition was not for an insignificant amount of money. The first prize winner won $1,000, second prize $500, and third prize was $500 also. And we will get on to the winning submissions in just a moment. But firstly, a very quick recap of how this contest works. So Cypress and Mauser made 50 kits available. Um, this is the Wi-Fi Bluetooth Pioneer kit, a quite large development board with a capacitive touch sensing on, uh, on board, along with a bunch of other things, including this quite nice TFT display with a few sensors in it. And uh, there is another similar Bluetooth low energy board, but with an e-ink display. Um, as well as that, there was one of these sort of snap-off development boards, um, which I, I'm quite fond of. I quite like this. You can use them as is, or you can snap them off and put them in different places and connect them using these headers. And finally, another board here, which is your sort of uh, more familiar microcontroller setup. It's a small board here, and this is a snap-off programmer. Um, all of these boards, by the way, had the kit prog programmer on board, meaning that you could program them via USB. The way the contest worked is after the announcement, uh, and you know what hardware you will be using, you design a project based on that hardware. Um, if you do it early enough and we get that uh design brief of yours, then we can send out hardware to you if you do not already have it, although anyone can enter if they own the hardware or buy it themselves as well. And then at the end of the competition, they are all judged and the first three positions win a prize. We'll take a brief look at the winning entries in just a moment, but first, if you head to the project page of the Electromega website, you will see a lot of the other submissions to this contest. In fact, it's quite easy to see them because they all are using this quite distinct hardware that I just showed you. These are the PSOC6 evaluation boards, and there are some fantastic projects here. While we do have some winners, these are definitely worth a look as well. But moving on to the winners, uh, there's an article by Mo Long on the Electroeca website which takes you through all of these projects, gives you a rundown of them and links out to them, but I'll very quickly go over them now. In third place, Vinay Gauda used the PSOC6 Wi-Fi Bluetooth Pioneer kit to make a smart home setup. What you have here is the two capacitive pu touch buttons turning on a light strip that's just above the boards just there, and the light sensor is detecting whether there is enough light in the room to turn the main light off or not. Um, it's kind of a clever little setup really because it means that uh, it's always detecting the correct light level to make sure that you're never left in the dark. A nice feature here is that it used a lot of the features of the Wi-Fi Bluetooth Pioneer kit. Um, as you can see, the onboard screen here has some feedback to the user, and as well as the power-saving feature with the uh, light sensor and the relays, there is also a PIR sensor that isn't pictured here, um, and the onboard PDM microphone, which is to detect intruders. Um, this is a very nice proof-of-concept smart home device, all using the one microcontroller, and a very deserved third place. In second place, we have Naveen, who used the Bluetooth Low Energy Kit, um, you can see here with the e-ink display, um, for voice recognition, and in fact ported over the TensorFlow, TensorFlow Lite micro SDK to do so. So this workflow diagram covers it quite nicely. Uh, the microphone picks up the voice, and um, that same microphone was used to uh, collect voice samples to train a TensorFlow Lite model using Edge Impulse, 
uh, TensorFlow Lite uh, uses inference to work out what you want to do. It will send a, uh, a command via BLE to an ESP32 development board and will send that to the air conditioner or whatever you want to control. The project page takes you through everything you need to know to set this up yourself, including setting up Modus Toolbox, uh, the Eclipse IDE setup for working with these Cypress PSOC6 boards, and uh, how to train the model and all of the code involved as well. Uh, yeah, this is a truly fantastic project, and again, a very, very deserving second place. And in first place is Bastian Slee with an incredibly detailed project which is essentially taking you through the entire theory of audio analysis and then putting it into practice on the PSOC6 chipset using this Wi-Fi prototyping development board that you can see here. Um, there is way too much for me to go into in a simple announcement here. Um, out of all of the things that I have seen uh, in these contests, this is more than just a contest entry. This is an education in how hearing works, the difference between sound and audio, and how you can represent that sound. And as a bonus, it has a little bit of live saxophone playing in, um, as he says, the first time in many years. If you would like to know more about the winning entries, all of the projects are linked on this article uh, by Mo Long, which I will link in the description of the video. But also do check the projects tab of the Electromega website because there are various projects, as I've mentioned before, including this picture of a doggy. So a big thank you to Cypress and Mauser for sponsoring the great PSOC6 challenge. That challenge is now over, but there are many other contests to come. Um, anyone with a, an account on the Electromega website, which is free to make, can enter the contests. And as I mentioned earlier, if you pitch an idea, we will uh, be sending out a certain amount of hardware to people in order to try and build those ideas. And there is some real money to win. And in the past, there's been goodies given away for contests as well. Well, um, so yeah, if you want to get involved, head to the Electromeca website and head to the cont uh, contest tab and you'll find everything you need to know. It's that time again, folks. This is the mystery box. Now, uh, a bit of a tease. I'm not actually going to be opening the mystery box this week, I'm afraid. I mean, this is the official mystery box. It has mystery box written on it, and it's all this stuff given to us by the lovely people at Mauser. However, the box that I'm giving away this week is not mysterious whatsoever. It's this. Now, I gave away something similar to this just a couple of weeks ago. This is a Cypress evaluation board based on the PSOC6 chip, and I thought since we've just announced the prize winners of the Cypress competition, what better time than now to give it away? Um, and this one is particularly special. I think out of all of them, this is probably my favourite. So what makes this particular evaluation board so special compared to the others? Well, um, as you can see, it has the same capacitive touch buttons and a slider down there on the uh, bottom corner. And the, the uh, header that you see here, the shield, um, has a PDM microphone, a thermistor, and a motion sensor in it too. However, this little display here, that is an e-ink display. And uh, as you know from me talking on the show before, I am particularly fond of e-ink. And perhaps unsurprisingly, the uh, BLE in BLE Pioneer Kit means that this board is particularly well set up for working with Bluetooth low energy, and there are various examples of doing that available to you. Um, there's a lot of documentation for this on the Electromega website because we just had the contest. In fact, if you head to the Great PSOC6 Challenge page, you will find everything you need to get started relatively quickly. Um, I've played with all of the PSOC6 chip-based boards for the contest, and I really enjoyed them. This one had a particularly special thing for me just because, as I've mentioned, I really love e-ink. Anyway, enough waffling. This is going out to one of you, um, so we have a prize, now we just need to pick a prize winner. And your winner this week is Alberto Perro, who left a comment on last week's video about DMSI. Just to remind you, that is the instruction language for the DMARC evaluation board we were looking at on Crowd Supply, and he quite rightly points out that there are already other uh, things like uh, Python, be it MicroPython and CircuitPython, and it might not be handy to have yet another thing for people to learn. Anyway, we'll be in touch with you, Alberto, as to how to get this board out to you. And just a quick reminder, all you have to do to enter the Mystery Box competition is leave a comment on a video. And in the following week's show, we just pick at random a prize winner from the comments of the previous show. Anyway, congratulations, Alberto. This kit will be on its way out to you. And by the way, um, it also comes with a nice little uh, Bluetooth low energy dongle for your computer, um, which is handy. Uh, it means you don't have to have any Bluetooth low energy devices to get started. I just thought it was a nice little touch. Anyhow, that is enough Mystery Box wombling. Let's get on with the show. We're going to close out today's show by looking at a couple of new boards, as well as one on crowd supply. But first, it is time for artificial intelligence to answer the question, are the dogs good dogs? It is, of course, a very stupid question because they're all good dogs, Bront. However, uh, this is a uh, university project which uses the uh, NVIDIA Jetson Nano, I believe, along with uh, various tools to train models on uh, whether a dog is uh, lying down, sitting, standing, or as it says here, undefined, a, a photo where you can't tell. Um, and the idea being that you can use that uh, trained model to decide whether a dog is sitting and then dispense treats. 
So, uh, the demonstration video has Henry, who is very definitely a good boy. Um, and as you can see, Henry sits down, and uh, the little Jetson Nano over there, which has a little servo and an attachment here, um, dispenses the treat. Um, I'll play that just one more time. I wonder if I'm going to be in the way I am. Let me move myself out of the way. So, uh, Henry sits down because he's a good dog. Uh, then look, the treat comes out, and it's just... It's just incredible. It's just fantastic. So yes, I might be making light of this, but this is actually very cool and it is uh, a proper serious research project. Um, this is the NVIDIA blog, by the way, I will leave a link to it in the description. However, there is a link to the actual paper, um, although be warned going in that this is artificial intelligence research. It's quite dense reading. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is absolutely fantastic, absolutely fascinating. Um, learning how we can teach computers to recognize things that we just recognize normally is a truly fascinating subject and one that you can absolutely get lost in. Um, and yeah, I would absolutely absolutely recommend giving this a read. Moving on to crowd supply for a whistle stop funding website things. This is Eduponics Mini. This is an ESP32 smart gardening system. As you can see from the page, this is not launched yet and I'm going to spend very little time on it. But needless to say, I think this looks very cool indeed. So um, you can see this is an ESP32 uh, chip on the board with a lot of extra ways of uh, attaching things. Um, but if you actually look at the picture of the kit down here, you get everything you need uh, to basically set up an, uh, an automatic gardening system. And they have an app, which is apparently a completely customizable app. Um, I will leave a link to it in the description. Go and have a quick read through this. We'll be coming back to it when it launches, absolutely. Um, but yeah, um, I'm very up for the idea of uh, an open source system that uses the ESP32 for smart plant watering. For me, it all lands on how open is this app? Um, can I change it myself? All this kind of stuff. Or is this another pr proprietary app that's going to stop being supported after a year or two? That's the key for me. Moving on to the Nucleo G491RE board. Now, I want to very quickly cover this, um, just the fact that it exists. Uh, these Nucleo boards uh, are very familiar to many of us. The evaluation boards are the first thing that people have used with the STM32 chips on them. They're very easy to get into. The difference with this one is it's specifically for the STM32 G4. Now, this is a relatively new line of chips from, uh, from ST Micro. Um, it's for, as it says here, uh, yeah, it's for e-mobility, digital power supplies, advanced motor controls, lighting, and building automation products. Uh, this is, of course, taken from the fantastic CNX software blog. Um, I've spent many times extolling the virtues of this website before, and I'm not going to go into much detail. Um, head to the website and read this article. It's a fascinating quick overview of the chip. And the uh, Nucleo G491RE board is now available, and it is uh, €17.79 on my local version of Mauser. Finally this week, we will soon be seeing a new board from Pine64. If you're familiar with the Rock Pro 64, this is going to be very much the spiritual successor to it. It has a much more powerful processor, but a lot of the same features and a lot of new cool features as well. We find ourselves once again on the fantastic CNX software, um, and uh, the full list of everything we know about it so far is listed here perfectly. Um, it is worth noting that there is a huge amount of potential peripherals here, although um, the particular chip that is used, um, it uses multiplexing, so you won't necessarily be able to use all of these things at the same time. That doesn't particularly matter, because there's some stuff about this that I think is just completely awesome. Um, first things first, it has a native e-ink display port. Uh, the idea is it's just a port designed specifically for plugging an e-ink display into, and uh, Pine64 will also be uh, releasing a 10-inch e-ink display to go with the board as well. That's something that I find uh, fairly cool. While there are other boards that come with e-ink displays, I can't really think of one that works quite the same way as this sort of SBC form computer that does. I may be wrong, and if there is one, feel free to let me know in the comments. Now, the board will support up to 8GB of RAM, which is nice, and another feature that I found kind of cool is that there's going to be battery control and charging built into the board as well. Um, there's a, a lot of information here, and as always, I will link in the description and you can read through it at your leisure. Um, but this is something that I, yeah, I, I'm really quite interested to see when it lands. Uh, there is no release date as yet and no price. Of course, when there is, we will definitely come back to it. So that is our show for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this is the 33rd Electromaker Show. We are a third of the way to 100 shows, or at least we will be when we're a third of the way through the next episode. I'm not quite sure how that works. But yeah, thank you for everyone who's stuck with us so far. Um, as always, if there's anything you'd like to see more of or anything you think we've missed, please do leave it in the comment section below. But for now, I hope you have a safe and productive week, and I will see you next time.